Welcome to Hoopla, where we bring the fire and ignite the NBA's hottest debates and discussions. From controversial trades to jaw-dropping dunks, we dive into every aspect of the game, leaving no stone unturned. Some NBA players move from the Golden State to New York with a $50 million contract, and another NBA player received $130 million to his account after the move. These are the winners of the NBA 2023 free agency. NBA teams threw money around like it was going out of style in the first three days of the free agency, but there weren't many surprises, except for the insane amounts of money some players are making. Kyrie Irving, who returned to Dallas, Draymond Green, who went back to the Golden State, Brooke Lopez and Chris Middleton, who both stayed with Milwaukee, Kyle Kuzma, who is sticking with the Wizards even though they're rebuilding, and Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, and D'Angelo Russell who all decided to stay with the Los Angeles Lakers. I guess the NBA teams are just trying to be safe and not make any big changes this offseason. But who knows? Maybe next year we'll see some movement. In the meantime, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the show as these rich athletes make even more money than they already have. Number 1. Boston Celtics The Boston Celtics made a huge power move this offseason by trading for Chris Stapp's Porzingis. Sure, they lost Marcus Smart, but Porzingis is a clear talent upgrade. He's a year and a half younger, a foot taller, and coming off the best season of his career. He can hit threes from four or five feet beyond the three-point line, which will open up a lot of space for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. He's also still an above-average defender and rim protector. Basically, the Celtics traded a great defender for an even better scorer and defender. It's a no-brainer. Some Celtics fans are probably worrying right now. They're not used to seeing their team make big trades. And they're worried about losing Smart, but I think they'll get over it once they see Przingis in action. He's a special player, and he's going to help the Celtics win a lot of games. Number 2. Phoenix Sun The Phoenix Suns were not in a good spot this offseason. They had just traded for Bradley Beal, who was one of the highest paid NBA players. That meant they didn't have a lot of money to spend on other free agents. But the Suns have been surprisingly active in the free agency, signing a bunch of players on their veteran minimum. These players may not be stars, but they're all solid role players who can contribute to a winning team. One of the most interesting signings is Eric Gordon. Gordon is a veteran sharpshooter who can space the floor for Beal and Booker. He's also a good defender and can play point guard if needed. Another interesting signing is Yuta Watanabe. Watanabe is six foot nine forward who can shoot threes and defend multiple positions. He's not a star, but he's a good player who can help the Suns win games. The Suns may have the most star-studded roster in the NBA, but they've done a good job of surrounding their big four with solid role players. They're a team to watch out for next season. 3. Los Angeles Lakers The Los Angeles Lakers have been praised for their off-season moves, but some people are wondering if they're really all that great. Sure, they've retained some of their young players, but they haven't really made any big splashes in three agency. In fact, some people are saying that the Lakers have actually lost some of the 2022-23 estimated wins. That's not a good sign. But there is a move that the Lakers can definitely be proud of. They re-signed Austin Reeves to a four-year, $56 million contract. That's a steal. Reeves is a young player with a lot of potential. He's a good shooter, a good defender, and he's a smart player. He has a good chance to be the Lakers' third best season this season. The Lakers were lucky to get Reeves for so cheap. They could have matched any offer he received, but no other team was really that interested in him. That's a big win for the Lakers. Of course, the Lakers still have a lot of work to do, but they need to find a way to get better if they want to compete for the championship. But this is a good start for the team. 4. Fred Van Vliet The Houston Rockets want to buy all the latest toys. Even though they don't really know how to play with them, they've added more estimated wins this offseason than anyone else. But it's fair to withhold judgment on all three of their new players. Fred Van Vliet, Dylan Brooks, and Jock Landale. Brooks is an all-time bad shooter who's genuinely been surrounded by plenty of offensive firepower. Landale is a 27-year-old with two seasons of NBA experience, and Van Vliet is a 6'1 point guard who's generally been surrounded by lengthy, experienced defenders and hasn't had an above-average effective field goal percentage or true shooting percentage since 2017-18. But that didn't stop Houston from giving Van Vliet a massive three-year, $130 million max deal. To this point in his career, Van Vliet has just made over $80 million, which was already a heck of haul under an undrafted player. And now, he's more than doubling that total. In other words, 
The Rockets are basically throwing money at players and hoping that something sticks. It's a bold strategy, but it's also a risky one. We'll just have to wait and see if it pays off. Number 5. Mavericks The Dallas Mavericks are spending money like crazy this offseason, and it's starting to raise some eyebrows. First, they signed Kyrie Irving to a massive contract. That's a risky move, considering Irving's history of being a bit of a head case. But hey, the Mavs are loaded with money, so why not? Then, they signed Grant Williams to a bargain deal. Williams is a great defender and shooter, and he's exactly the type of player who could thrive playing off Irvin and Luka Doncic. So, that was a smart move. They also brought back Seth Curry, which is always a good thing. They added some front court depth through the draft, so they've definitely been busy this offseason. The question is, are they any better? It's hard to say. Irving is a great player, but he's also a wild card, and the Mavs are still a young team so it's possible that they'll take a step back this season. But hey, at least they're having fun, and that's what matters most, right? 6. Loser of 2023 Free Agency The Portland Trailblazers are finally broke up with their long-term partner. They're not sure what to do with themselves, and they're just trying to figure out how to move on. They lost their number two player, Damian Lillard, who requested a trade. That's like losing your best friend. It's a huge blow, and it's going to take some time to recover. In the meantime, they're trying to stay positive. They signed Jeremiah Grant to a big contract, but he's not really a good fit for the team. He's a scorer, but he doesn't add much else to the box score. Ideally, a Lillard trade would tip off a full-scale rebuild and youth movement revolving around Scoot Henderson. But the Grant deal makes that a little trickier. So for now, the Blazers are just kind of stuck in limbo. They're not good enough to compete, and they're just not bad enough to tank. It's a tough situation but they'll just have to figure it out as they go. On the other side, the Denver Nuggets got a championship team, and they're not sure what to do with it. They kept all their starters, which is great, but they also lost some key role players like Bruce Brown, Jeff Green, and Thomas Bryant. That's not so great. And then, they did something really weird. They used their taxpayer mid-level exception to re-sign Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson is a good player, but he's not a great player, and he's not a good fit for the Nuggets. In fact, Reggie Jackson was so bad that he fell out the Nuggets rotation shortly after he was signed. That's a pretty big red flag. The Nuggets also signed Justin Holiday, who's a solid player, but he's not a game changer. So basically, the Nuggets did nothing to improve their team this offseason. They just stood pat. That's not a good strategy if you're trying to repeat as champions. General manager Calvin Booth may be betting on the aforementioned young players and his incoming draft picks, but that's a risky strategy. The Nuggets need to add some veteran talent if they want to stay on top. If you liked the video, make sure to smash the like button below and comment down below the topics you want to hear about next. Until next time, peace out.